Hi, everybody. Welcome to the sessions on investing decision. I'm so happy that you have reached this stage in this course of corporate finance. Imagine now you know everything about time value of money. You know everything, almost everything about cost of capital, which is like the biggest concept within the financing decision. So all these things being well done will give you an um, a very solid foundation to grasp the concepts that are going to come oh, now in the course of corporate finance. So I'm going to uh, pick up the discussion on investing decisions from here on. This is perhaps, and many people say, the most important concept of the whole course in corporate finance. And of course, at a base level, which we sometimes also called as corporate finance one, sometimes we know it as uh, managing financial resources, sometimes we know it with a with the name financial management. Capital budgeting and working capital management are going to be the centerpiece of assessments, interviews, placements, case study competitions, etc. So make sure that you have a good handle on both of these concepts. Okay, so allow me to begin by sharing the screen. Well, for a corporate such as a Maruti Suzuki or a Flipkart or any other corporate for that matter, um, the decisions that they take can be divided into two broad phases. The first is a short-term investment decision versus the other could be a long-term investment decision. Now, take a look. I've taken an example of Maruti Suzuki as an automotive player, India's largest, which is evaluating a decision to buy another piece of land. And why do they want to do it? They don't want to make trading on that, okay? uh, like a Warren Buffett or a Rakesh Chunjunwala, but they want to build a factory on it. So for Maruti Suzuki, this purchase or this investment will have long-term ramifications, long-term impact uh, in their life. This evaluation of decision, which have long-term gratification for the investor, called as capital budgeting. Simple words, you are budgeting for your long-term capital. The other decisions that a corporate might have to take are shorter-term decisions. Now, shorter-term assets you've studied in your financial accounting could be your current assets, such as an inventory such as an account receivable, such as a cash management, such as something to do with short-term loans and advances, something to do with your prepaid expenses, something to do with your payment to a supplier. So all of these things put together is called as your working capital management. Both of these decisions are super duper important because it uh, doesn't matter where the company raises money from, what will define the future of the corporate is how much return are they able to generate from these investments? Obviously, more the merrier. Okay, so um, keeping you know that thing in mind, let's understand some of the basic principles in investing decision. The first and the most important decision, and sometimes most important things are so well understood, is that we invest or we buy only when the benefits of that thing are more than the cost. Now, it's something which is easily said then done. Why I say that is um, imagine yourself taking a decision to buy a phone. Now for all of you, like a student, a full-time student, a phone is a long-term asset. And therefore, this will fall into the realms of capital budgeting as such. So uh, which will have their own questions and there is a specific way in which you will evaluate those projects. But the point here is that uh, the price of the phone that you see online or let's say in, in an offline setting, let's say is a 40,000 rupees, that represents the cost in your decision-making matrix. But for you, the evaluation of benefit is not going to be an easy job. I'm trying to highlight the fact that in taking a decision, while it's very easy to say that obviously if benefits are more than the cost, I'm going to go for it. But how would you evaluate the two is where the rubber is going to hit the road, is where your prowess as an MBA scholar is going to come to the picture. Okay, so uh, let's say 
continuing with your example. So what are the benefits that you think you will derive from having a, a phone, let's say a 40,000 rupee phone? Like um, I will be able to, let's say, uh, make phone calls. I will be able to send some text messages. I will be able to receive OTPs for my banking transactions and my you know, different apps you need to receive OTPs. Mm, I will be able to watch some, let's say, OTT uh, episodes, series, etc. But hey, all of these are qualitative. How would you quantify it? It's so that it could be put in a number matrix form and an Excel can be brought to life. So all of that becomes sometimes very difficult. And therefore, in real life, when you are going to be a practitioner, when you will join an industry or a company as a finance manager into this field, you will realize that it is much more difficult uh, out there than we are going to do in the class. Okay, so that's my point number one. My point number two is, again, pretty simple and which you perhaps already would know is the fact that you are going to be working on your investing timeline because in the whole arena of investing decision, um, remember we had done this framework, a business would raise money from different people called as equity and debt there is a timeline that they will have called as a borrowing timeline. The rate of this timeline will be called as a cost of capital, but this money will be deployed by the business into some opportunities, which are called as projects. And these timeline it will be called as investing timelines. Remember, this is a framework that we discussed while we were doing the cost of capital. So um, while we are talking about long-term decisions or we are going to talk about the short-term decisions, make sure that you place yourself in context of an investing timeline. I'm not saying to forget the borrowing timeline altogether. You cannot because in order to take a decision, you need some kind of an input called as cost of capital, which will come from the borrowing timeline in your life. So uh, I'm not saying that you have to forget, but you have to place yourself on this. So when we say, you know, what happens today is going to be largely an outflow may be happening because in an investing timeline, you've got to deposit something today, invest something today, and a gratification will happen tomorrow. So there will be a cash flow that will happen. So, so create that context in your mind that you're buying something, you're investing something. So for an individual, for example, for your normal daily life, um, you're buying a refrigerator, a household, you're buying a television, you know, as, an, as a household examples, or for an individual, a student, you're buying a laptop or a mobile. So in, in all those cases, you're putting yourself on the investing timeline. Now, investing timeline could really be a short-term timeline and a long-term timeline, but we are going to focus largely on, as part of the capital budgeting discussions, on the long-term decisions. This is where a meaty discussion is going to happen. This is where a lot of mathematical stuff is going to be taught to you. This is where uh, you would put Excel to use in a very interesting fashion. Not to say that your working capital management is going to be any boring. We will try and include a lot of you know exercises there as well. But the first decision that will hit you is the capital budgeting, the long-term ones, and therefore we have to devote enough time on that as well. So uh, in the long-term decisions, typically, let's say you buying a phone or a corporate like Maruti buying um, you know, a piece of land, uh, there your outflows are going to happen today, but the inflows let's say is going to happen 15 years, 20 years, sometimes even longer. Sometimes let's say sometimes shorter, like three to five years, but generally it's like 10 to 15, 20 years, which means that there will be the difference in the time zone in which the cash flows are going to arise, which means the benefit and the cost, the comparison cannot be made without applying the rules of time value of money. But the good thing is now you know how to bring a future value into the present value. Ah, that is very simple by discounting it by one plus R raised to the power N. So we can bring everything to T0 and make a balanced comparison of benefit and cost. All right. For this discounting, we're always going to use the opportunity cost. This is something, again, like a very strong fundamental of corporate finance that whenever in your life you have to do discounting of any cash flow, always pick up your opportunity cost at that moment. Okay. Therefore, we say that decisions are only as good as that moment that we take it. Because after six months, if your opportunity cost changes, and therefore the evaluation of project can also change. So sometimes, therefore, we say that uh, all these decisions that we are taking, specifically the long-term ones, are full of risk because anything can change. Today, I think that I will invest in X rupees and I will get a Y rupees after three years. Tomorrow, 
perhaps this Y number can be a much smaller number. Let's say there could be a COVID, there could be, uh, you know, a demonetization, there could be an interest rate change, there could be an oil price fluctuation, there could be a competitor coming up. So that's the risk that a business takes. And therefore, we say that risk and return go hand in hand. So long story short, that uh, apply the rules of time value of money, keeping the fundamentals, um, Okay, and for that, the rate of discount that you're going to use is going to be the opportunity cost to that person at that moment of decision making. Okay, the last point as a general point that we are trying to discuss here is that the benefit and cost that we are referring to can be expressed in absolute terms, but it also can be expressed in percentage terms. And this is something that you already have done. Perhaps you don't realize that you've done it. So the cost of taking a decision in percentage terms is your cost of capital. And the benefit of taking that decision, making that investment in, in investing into that project is nothing but your IRR. And you've already done this fundamental that IRR has to be more than the cost. This is exactly the same point as we are making a point The benefits have to be more than the cost. So what I'm trying to refer to is that it's all part of the same routine. It's all part of the same framework. Sometimes we use different lingo. By and large, we're trying to get to the same point. Right. So before we move forward, just a quick decision. So we are talking about investing decisions, two type of decisions, long term decisions like a Maruti Suzuki have to buy a land. Land is a long term asset. Therefore, we'll have a long term ramifications. This evaluation will be part of capital budgeting here. A flip card like a, a trading firm doesn't have to do a lot of value addition in house. They just buy and sell. Sometimes they don't even buy and sell. They are just a connecting mechanism. So in this case, the example I have very carefully taken is a flip card assured, in which case many times specifically before the festive season, they will actually buy the stock as principal and then they will sell it. So for them, uh, it's a working capital decision. It's a short term decision. The decision that a flip card have as a long term is going to be, uh, should I buy the land to open up a warehouse? So a warehouse for Flipkart is going to be a long-term decision, but to buy the stocks such as a uh, Puma shoes is going to be part of inventory for Flipkart. And therefore this decision, a shorter one is going to be part of the working capital management, all right? Every day a company has to take a lot of decisions in terms of working capital management. From a household standpoint, you know what's a working capital management? Mm, well, I want to buy some flour, okay? Atta dal chawal. Uh, and there is a five kg packet or there is a 10 kg packet. Which one should I take? That's a working capital decision. We call it inventory management, so on and so forth. So you can see that, you know, sometimes we don't realize that we are taking a working capital decision um, while it has such significant impact on our lives, okay? Now, um, Coming back to the long-term decisions where I said that it's going to be really the chunkier part of it, the decisions that we will be evaluating could be, number one, a corporate finance pure play decision where a company, a corporate or a firm will be investing into a business project. This is exactly the project that uh, we have used as a framework to discuss the cost of capital as well. So just to kind of draw out the connect, I am taking the same picture here. So you will invest some money here and then there will be some gratification after let's say 5, 10, 20 years. And then there will be some time value of money. You're going to bring this Y back and so on and so forth. So that's a corporate's decision corporate finance this is pure play corporate finance an extension of that and there is no harm in learning more the rules of corporate finance are actually the rules of long-term investment evaluation so there is another long-term investment that many times we make into financial instruments so imagine uh, a mutual fund buying an equity stock for a three year time frame. Their timeline is the investing timeline is going to resonate very closely to the timeline that a company would have to invest for three years. So, uh, so imagine a mutual fund buying something. So there will also be an outflow today. And then there will also be an inflow after three years, five years, 10 years, depending on what the horizon is. Imagine a company, uh, let's say um, an investor such as a hedge fund buying a corporate bond for 30 years. So imagine uh, an X being spent today and then Y is going to come after 30 years. So you can imagine the similarity between the two timelines is amazingly high. 
because both the timelines are investing timelines after all. And therefore, I can say that the principles that we are going to learn for corporate finance capital budgeting are going to be very similar and replicable in context of financial instruments as well. Right. So uh, with that, we bring this video to an end. I can't wait to meet you in the live classes to talk about a lot of numericals, a lot of live examples, um, you know, a lot of work on the Excel when it comes to the capital budgeting and long term investment decisions. Thank you very much for watching. See you very soon in the classes.